Hi there, it's Max from Isolation Game again, and uh, today uh, we're covering K-frames and timelines from uh, Dreams Workshop. Let's dive in. You might be able to animate wobbly platforms with the action recorder, but keyframes are where animation gets serious. Nice try, Cuthbert, but leave the dream shaping to the experts. We're gonna use keyframes to animate the platform so Connie can reach the exit. A keyframe records any changes you make to an object, such as its position, tweak menu settings, or anything else you can think of. Then it stores those changes in a gadget that you can switch on and off. Okay. Let's use keyframes to help Connie get across those platforms. First, go to the assembly menu. If it's closed, press the square button to open it. Look for the animate button, which has a clapperboard icon, and click on that. Start by selecting the keyframe gadget, which is the one with the diamond and the plus sign. Then stamp it in the scene above the first gap. You'll notice there's now a stop recording button in the context menu. And your imp now looks like a red keyframe. That means the keyframe gadget is recording any changes you make in the scene. But unlike the action recorder, it only records the state of things, not a period of time. It's probably easier to understand if we put it into practice. Let's try it on the block that's on the ground in front of Connie. Grab it with R2 and place it between the first two platforms. You'll see some dashed lines appear on the block. These tell you that the keyframe has recorded the change you've made to the object. You can move it as many times as you like. It'll only store the final result. If that's not the outcome you wanted, you can always undo your last change with the left directional button. The next bit is super important. To finish and store your changes in the keyframe, you need to select the stop recording button in the context menu. Select it now and see what happens. That's right, the block has snapped back to its original position. That's because the keyframe isn't active right now. But we can still see what's recorded by selecting the gadget with X. There, the block is back to where you moved it. You'll notice the keyframe doesn't record how things moved, just where they moved to. Make sure you deselect the keyframe before moving on. You can do that by pressing the circle button. In the next step, I'll show you how to use your keyframe in the scene. Oh, I already know a little bit about keyframe keyframes here because uh, I've spent a lot of time uh, trying to make my own gadget work properly when uh, a character walks into the uh, zone and uh, the platform goes up to the place that I needed oh that was that was hard to grasp but now I'm pretty confident. Let's see what's next. Now that you've recorded a keyframe, let's look at how to activate it. See the trigger zone above the first platform? Select it with X to check its area of effect. Okay, it looks like the zone stretches across the whole gap. Deselect it with the circle button. Then use the sticks or the grab cam to move in closer to the gadget. You'll notice an output port on its side, labeled Detected. This sends a signal when it detects a possessed puppet like Connie. We need to connect this to the keyframe, so select the port with R2 or X to create a wire. Then stretch it to the keyframe gadget with your imp and use R2 or X to connect the wire to the power port. 
Now the trigger's own signal will switch on the keyframe when it detects Connie. Try it out in play mode. Just press the options button and select the controller icon. See, as soon as Connie enters the trigger zone area, the block springs into place. Well, it works okay, but the animation's a bit fast, don't you think? We can do something about that after you take Connie across. Head back into edit mode, rewind time with L3, and I'll show you how to add smoothing to the keyframe in the next step. Smoothing. Okay then, we've made a simple keyframe animation. Now it's time to smooth it out and make it look better. Like almost everything in Dreams, keyframes can be tweaked. So open this one's tweak menu, hold L1, then press the square button over it. You'll see two sliders at the bottom, slow power up and slow power down. These determine how long it takes for the keyframe to turn on fully. Hover over the slow power up slider now and hold X. Then, move your imp to the right to increase the value. Let's set it to one second for now. You can set slow power down to any value you like. Then close the tweak menu by selecting the cross icon in the corner. Or you can hold L1 over the menu, then press the circle button. Let's see what that looks like in play mode. Ah, yes, that looks works. a lot smoother. If you're happy with the new animation, switch back to edit mode. Rewind time with L3 and move on to the next step. Actually, I had to do the same thing with so much effort <laughs> and so differently with using with use of timeline and uh, lots of wiring and I still wasn't happy with the result but this is easy <laughs> it looks like the bridge across the next gap has collapsed we could just move it back into place but where's the fun in that let's perform a little bit of magic instead Go to the assembly menu and select another keyframe from the animate menu. Stamp it above the gap with R2 or X. Now see if you can reassemble the bridge. Grab the first part and move it back where it should be. One of the great things about keyframes is that they can affect multiple objects. So you can put the other half of the bridge back too. Then select Stop Recording from the Context menu to store your changes. Once recording stops, the bridge will go back to its original position. So, select the keyframe with X if you want to see those changes again. Hmm, I could have done a better job at positioning the bridge. Nothing to worry about though, because editing a keyframe is easy. Just select the Edit Keyframe button in the context menu. It's got the same icon as a keyframe gadget. This allows you to make changes to the keyframe. You can remove things from a keyframe by pressing the triangle button over them. And now the bridges are back on the ground. Let's put them back into place, but this time, make sure they're a bit straighter. Remember, when you're grabbing things, you can realign them by pressing the triangle button. There we go. I already did. Much better. You can select stop recording again to fin finish editing this keyframe. Then move on to the next step 
when your bridge is in place. The bridge's new position is already stored in the keyframe, so all we need now is a way to activate it. That's where this trigger zone will come in handy. Let's select it to see what zone it covers. Hmm, it's not in the gap this time. It's over this button. First, create a wire from the trigger zone's output using R2 or X. Then stretch it over to the keyframe and connect it to its power port. When Connie steps on the button now, the keyframe will be switched on. But what happens when she leaves the trigger zone? Let's test it in play mode to find out. Just as I thought. When Connie moves away, the keyframe switches off. Let's head back to edit mode and see what we can do about that. Of course, we could just move the trigger zone into the gap, but this is an animation tutorial. So let's see if we can use the keyframes tweak menu to fix the problem. Open it now with the L1 and square button shortcut and have a look at the options there. Hovering over the buttons will bring up their names. The one we're interested in is called keep changes. With this option turned on, any changes made by the animation will be permanent. So once Connie activates the keyframe, the bridge will stay in its new position until you rewind the scene. Since we're already in the tweak menu, let's add some smoothing to that animation. I think I'll set it to two seconds this time. Okay, time to close the tweak menu with L1 and the circle button. Then try out these changes in play mode. How's that for a magic trick? You can switch back to edit mode, rewind time, and experiment with the keyframe to see what else you can do. Maybe you could try keyframing a tweak menu setting, or animating some elements from the tutorial collection. When you're done, move on to the next step and I'll show you how to use keyframes on a timeline. Let's just move to the timeline. Keyframes are great for making simple animations. But if you want to make something more complex, you need a timeline. See that little block floating between the last two platforms? Let's use keyframes on a timeline to animate it. Start by selecting a timeline from the animate menu. Stamp it down somewhere around the last gap. Then you can use the circle button to unequip the gadget. Now open the timeline, hold L1 over it and press X. Oh no. This is the timeline canvas. You can move the canvas with your imp by grabbing it with R2. The numbers along the top are seconds and you can see it's set to 8 seconds by default. If you grab the edges with X, you can extend or shorten the canvas. Try setting it to around 6 seconds. If you ever need extra space to add more things, you can also extend the bottom of the timeline. Once you're comfortable with moving and resizing the timeline canvas, move on to the next step and we'll start adding things to it.
Now, it's time to animate the floating block. Get a new keyframe from the animate menu and stamp it in the scene. Now grab and move the block to its starting position at the edge of the platform where Cuthbert's waiting. Once the block's in place, remember to press the stop recording button in the context menu. Now, grab the keyframe gadget and move it over the timeline. The gadget will snap to it. Place it at the very start of the timeline. Then get another keyframe from the animate menu. We'll use this one to record the block's second position. This time, stamp the keyframe directly onto the timeline. Around the two second mark is good, on the same row as the first keyframe. Move the floating block to the opposite side of the gap. Now stop recording. Hover over the timeline canvas and play controls will appear. Using these controls, you can preview just the timeline without playing the rest of the scene. Select the play button to preview your animation. As you can see, gadgets are only active when the timeline's playhead is over them. So, when neither of the keyframes are switched on, the block goes right back to its original position. Now we need to edit the animation so the first keyframe blends into the second. To do that, open the first keyframe's tweak menu with L1 and the square button. Now that the keyframe is on a timeline, the buttons that were greyed out before are available. These are blend types, and they change how one keyframe merges into the next. Select the linear button, which will blend to the next keyframe at a constant speed. If you press the timeline's play button now, you'll see the platform move smoothly between the keyframed positions. Feel free to try out other blend types and see how they affect the animation. Then move on to the next step when you're ready. You can now also change the blend type by pressing L1 and X over the uh, place uh, between two key keyframes that you already have animation with, like this, by pressing L1 and X. Maybe he'll tell that a little bit later. Let's see what's next. We've got the platform moving smoothly now, but we can still improve how it works. Let's begin by making it pause for a moment at the start and finish, so Connie has an easier time getting on. All we have to do is scale the keyframes on the timeline so they last longer. You might want to get up close to the first keyframe before we start. Now, with your imp over the keyframe, hold the up directional button to extend it. Then do the same with the second keyframe. Now that the keyframes are longer, the blend has become quicker. You can see it for yourself by selecting the play button under the timeline. If you want to scale a keyframe more precisely, you can do that with its trim handles. Trim handles are the dotted lines at the beginning and end of keyframes. Grab them now with R2 to give it a try. We should get the platform back to where it started now, but instead of adding a new keyframe, we're going to clone the first one. You remember how to clone things, right? Just hold L1 
and grab the first keyframe with R2. Now drag it past the second keyframe and place it by releasing R2. Now we just need to add the blending between the last two keyframes. Only this time, we'll use a shortcut instead of the tweak menu. Just hover over the space between those keyframes, then hold L1 and press X. There you go, one linear blend added. You can even cycle through different blend types by keeping L1 held and pressing X again. I love shortcuts because I'm lazy. Use the play controls on the timeline to preview the animation. Move on to the final step when you're ready to continue. Nothing happens. Um, because the keyframe was selected. Now. Great, it works. Now, because there's some space at the end of the timeline where none of the keyframes are active, the platform just snaps right back to its original position. There's a few ways we could fix this. For example, we could shorten the timeline so there's no gap at the end. We could also lengthen the keyframe animation so it fills up the whole timeline. Or we could turn on keep changes in the last keyframes tweak menu. The last step is tweaking the timeline itself. So hold L1 anywhere over it, then press the square button to see all of its properties. The playback speed makes it go faster or slower. But what we're interested in right now is the playback mode. When it's set to once, the whole timeline will play, even if it was only powered for a split second. When it's set to sustain, it will only play when it has constant power. It will stop when it loses power, then resume from that point if it's turned on again. And if it's set to loop, it will repeat over and over as long as it has power. That sounds like the best option for this timeline, so select that one. Okay, it looks like we're good to go. You can close the timeline now by selecting the cross icon in the top right corner. Or you can hold L1 over the timeline itself, then press the circle button. Click L3 to rewind time, and test out your changes in play mode. Once you're happy with everything, exit through the door wrong. to complete this tutorial. Something is wrong. No, 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 I need the timeline. Ah, oh, I know it's wrong. It's here. The gap is around here, so Cuffbird, I don't know what's your real name. I just need to check why did this one break.
Okay, dude. Saved again. Thanks for watching. And uh, be a dreamer. <laughs>